So welcome back. This is the build video for the pre-production SOAS wing in a bag from uh, Angel Wing Design. Yes, yeah, it's Nick. It's, it's Nick. Look, happy teeth done. So I get my hair done at the same time. <laughs> SOAS wing in a bag. Let's build it. Oh, right, now then, superbly packed as always, oh, oh, there's a surprise extra gift, um, I just better text to make sure, or message Andy to make sure that that is alright for you to see, bear with. Okay, I'll quickly show you this, but don't tell anyone. Electric motor mount, 3D printed by Andy and designed by Andy for the gentle lady. Right, that's enough. That's all you see him. Let's get back to the SOS. <sighs> Soz. <laughs> right then, let's see what's in the kit. Oh, the battery to go with it. So don't worry about getting the battery. Andy's got it all sorted for you. And it's been designed, uh, the C of G is being designed around this. This is a 4.8 volt triple A. 400 milliamp hour battery cool right now then what have we got in here we have various bits of so some of the things about the s the new mark ii sos which i'm going to go through and i'm going to list for you in a moment um, but it's got um beefed up leading edges and then they're your main spars and obviously your wing joiner. Now the other thing which is very exciting, which uh, we will I'm gonna go into a bit more depth about is this is can you see me hand shaking? It's only because I'm excited. Whoa, look at that. All 3D printed. <whistles> so we'll put that away for one side for the moment. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's do the proper thing. Let's just put that, we all know I'm so hand fisted. Let's put these all back together. See what we got in here. I think they must eat a lot of fish and chips up north. Look at that, all packaged. Wow, look at that, all packaged. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Now, you'll see there's another set of what I just showed you earlier. Um, you weren't supposed to see that. That's for another top secret project. And, uh, right, tell you what we're going to do. Let me just, I'll get, I'm going to get this all out in a moment. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let me just quickly. So there's your, there's your plan, and there is the facility there to cut it down the middle to uh, do it in two halves, so you don't end up making um, two right wings. I mean, who's ever done that? Right, let me get this all out on the building board, and let's talk through everything we've got. 
Right, there you go, there's a sticker set. Uh, you can order these to go with the kit. You can have it without the kit if you don't want to. I think if you want it to look absolutely mega, then I'd go for that. Now uh, let's just see what we got. I've got um, three Elevons there and a uh, small piece of wire. That's for your push rods, I'm guessing. And then, so then we've got our magnets. And we have our... Right, there we go. Let's get these off of here. Wow, look at that laser cut and it's literally falling out the bed as we talk. Right, so I've got that one. I've got that one. Whew. Top, see that look? Laser cut to let you know that that's sheeting going on the top. Here's our ribs. And then there's the more ribs, intermediate ribs. These are your wing tips. That's part of the fin. These are the servo covers. Trailing edges. And then look at that. Right, tell you what I'm going to do. So, let me just, well, you'll have seen this as I've got this all out anyway. So anyway, there's all the bits and pieces. Put it all back in the box. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the plan down. So I am going to split my plan in two and then build um, each half because you can actually join the two. You can actually build the whole thing as one if you want to. Um, but let's just get, every, let's just calm down and then uh, let's crack on with the plan. Right, <clears throat> I've calmed down a little bit now. So, I have cut my plan in half along the designated line, but I'm not gonna actually put this down on the plan yet, and I'll tell you why. Because the first thing we gotta do is cut and get these all sanded out, because there's a little bit of an assembly for this that we're gonna do first. So, I'm just gonna cut all these out, I'm gonna keep them safe. Oh, I'll tell you what I've just noticed. Control rod connectors. I saw some little pins in the kit and thought, well, what the hell have I got these for? Look at that. That's exciting. Here are the seagulls. Yeah, they're waiting for me to test fly the uh, seagull. Right, I'm just gonna very carefully cut these all out and I'll let you know how to get on. Right, so, first thing, cutting these out. Um, either use a big knife like this, or I actually found a little pair of these snips is just as good, and then I'm just gonna clean them up afterwards with a file. So whichever suits your fancy, just be careful when you're cutting them out that you've got your hands out the way. And various bits like this, horns, they've gotta go away. So those there have gotta go away. And then don't forget these four to these two and these two here, these two, these two, they're going to get put back in the kits. So we're not using those at the moment, but the rest of it we're going to cut out and sand. Also, just a little tip, um, if you wear glass, if you wear glasses like me, not a problem, but I would just say when you're doing stuff like that, um, it's, I might be over cautious, but just be careful when you're doing this, that if you cut something like that, it might ping up in your face. So just be careful. So either put some glasses on, if you've got glasses on already, then that's not an issue, but um, something just to be aware of. Right, I got my bits sanded. I used my, uh, the fine grit on this permagrit thing. Thanks, Stanley. I also had to use that for a couple of, a little nail file for a couple of little bits. Now, top tip here. A lot of you won't realize 
But when Andy's actually making a kit, he'll make four or five prototypes to make sure it's absolutely right before it even comes to me to find out um, errors. Now, you've got a rib like that, and you see that slope. Don't think to yourself that that's not right. That's designed. Andy has made all the angles to accept the leading edge. So when you see stuff like this, that's got this angle on the front, that's there for a reason. So don't think is oh it that needs to be square these are all being cut for a specific reason don't get sanding that off because um, that's also for it to engage on the other side so I've got all those bits together now I've got them all identified and what I'm going to do now is let's just crack on and I think the first thing we're going to have to do is join a couple of bits together and then add some magnets but I'll show you what I'm going to do right first bit of gluing medium sino I'm using medium sino I've got this section here that's got the one winglet on it already or the, the, this little sort of tailed fairing and then your second one as you can see fits in there like so so that's the very first thing we're doing Right, now then, cleaned all my bits and pieces up and let's just talk through the process because we've got to get the orientation of our uh, magnets right or you're going to have a right mare. So, let me show you what I'm doing. Right, now, my advice is you want the left-handed side rib. You'll identify that because obviously it's sloping out to the tip. This little chap sat on his own. That's going to get glued to there like so and then what we're then going to do is we are going to drop a magnet in here and a magnet in here this forms the left part of the wing this is the right side of the wing so we're going to need magnets here and here and then this bit is the bit that's going to have your fin on it which is the removable bit so what I would suggest you do is when you've got it all orientated, just um, pop the old spar in like so. And then I'm going to drop that in there like that. So what you can do is you can dry fit and check all your magnet orientation. But what you're looking for is something like this. Do not glue it all together as it's not going to be an SOAS, is it? It's not going to be a wing in a bag. So my advice is let's just get the magnet sorted out. Again, I'm going to use medium sino, but just make sure that you've got your orientation right. But I'll show you a cheeky little trick for doing that. So I'm going to start on the left-hand side with these two pieces. This is getting glued with some medium sino, making sure that that is nice and square like so. Right, so I've done those two, glued in with um, medium sino. Now, obviously this is going to be sitting on here like this. Make sure you've got the right orientation. And that's going to pop in there like so. And um, so, if I fold that like that, get these two magnets like that, then make sure I've got the orientation right. Those two magnets are going to fit in there like so. So all I've got to do is pop them out and then uh, making sure I've marked it the right way, which I will do with that. And then what we're going to do is I am then going to use medium sino on um, this hole. Right, okay, so we've got our very last bit to do uh, now. So we've got our middle bit, uh, which the magnets are working. We've got the two magnets in there, and then obviously this bit's going to go on there. All right, about that, lads, calm down. So if I get my magnets in the pile, put that one on there, slide that bad boy off, like so, and then I add that one to there. like so. I now know that when I drop that onto there like so into these into the two holes 
they are the correct correct orientation but don't glue them like that because you'll never get it off but if I just literally move my move it sideways they're now um, ready to move and then what I can do is if I make myself a tiny little mark I can then just pop these out and glue them in place although I've got to be honest here they're so well in there but Well hopefully you had success with that, so I've got my cross tube, well, wing joiner, that pops in there like so, there's your centre one, that pops in there, snap, and then this one then pops in there like so, this is what you're looking for. So now let's crack on with uh, building some wings. So I've got my plan stuck down. A um, little tip there, um, for filming purposes, I like to use tape. I've found some of the cling film and that has been reflective. Um, and actually in Lidl, um, a couple of weeks ago, they were selling off this, uh, it's clear packing tape. It's very thin, I mean, I wouldn't get using it for, uh, you know, for hinges or anything like that, but it's perfect for actually just um, going over water. What I've done is I've just literally just laid it. Hang on a minute. Well, I said, you in the back, don't get going off to Little now because it might not be there. But it was, if you see them selling this off, uh, then I would say get it. Always worth having. Always uh, good to have a load of tape kicking about. So what we've got to do now is, um, my suggestion is, is I'd put countdown on <laughs> and I just sit, cut these all out. So you've got a left and a right, sand them all. And when, when we're done with all of that, I'll get back to you and we'll talk through the process of actually assembling the wing. Because there's a couple of little things that it's worth doing before we actually start the assembly. It will make life a lot, lot easier when you get further on. But just crack on with these first and then we'll get back. Right. This glider will go together very, very quickly if you do some very simple prep work. And when I say prep work... It's little things like this. So this, um, I'm just check that my spar um, fits in here. It's a little bit tight, but I'd rather that. And I've also chamfered the edge to suit. The other thing is your wing joiner. Just make sure that that's going to fit as well. you want those obviously you want to make sure that these are all fitting and also get your first um, six ribs and just make sure and check that all of these are going to fit in as well because what we're going to do is we're going to end up obviously what you don't want to do is find out one of them's tight and you're halfway through the build and it's going to be a nightmare to get to so just make sure that you've done anything that looks like it's going to join or connect just make sure that that joint actually works before we start actually gluing everything together so I'm ha very happy with that, I've gone over that. Um, I've got myself a set of ribs. I've got myself two trailing edges. Obviously I've got my main spar. I've got my leading edge. I've got the right tip uh, blank, a 3D tip blank, and I've also checked that for a fit as well. Um, that's absolutely fine. So what I'm gonna do first is, um, oh, hang on, and couple of tips as well so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pin this down and then the next thing is I'm going to get my first six ribs and I'm going to get it all jiggled together and I've just really come up with a super exciting Nick's top tip for the most accurate build you'll ever get stand by so here's my top tip I've got a couple of uh, steel blocks if I put that one there like so and then I put that one there like so. I've got my spar sat properly. There you go, look. All I've got to do is put it in place. And then the magnet, it's gonna hold that rib perfectly. Boom. Tell him Nick sent you. Right, I've got rib three, four and five. They're not glued. This is literally just a dry fit at the moment. 
and I am, I've got my this rib held together right on line with the magnets down the other end I'm using the plastic rib the um, 3d printed rib just to hold everything as it should be also holding the spar in the right place now I am just going to gently feed this through and this is why I'm saying it's a good idea to make sure you've checked all of this before we actually get on to doing this so I'm just going to feed this along here and then I will just slowly add these as I go and then when I'm happy with all of this got it all jigged in place what I'll do is I'll just tack it and for the um, let me just show for the ribs um, this end I'm going to use a new glue from um, Angel Wing Designs, a wood glue called TB2 and I'm going to glue that bit with TB2 and then this I'm very going to very carefully just get a quick dab with um, Sino, thin Sino but be very very careful just but that's only when I've got everything in place and I'm happy with it all lined up right there we go actually I've got to be honest with you it was absolutely dead easy so now all I'm going to do is uh, TBT wood glue on here I'm just going to tack these with Sino just be careful you don't get any Sino particularly down this end for your wing joiner or that end for your wing joiner but get them as square as possible which I will do and then uh, then it's really going to start accelerating so anyway I'll just glue this and I'll get back to you. Right, so I got the rest of the rib, the main ribs. So not the half ribs, the interstitial ribs like this. I've put the main, let me show you. So all I've done is I just slid them all along, got them jigged up. I tacked them with this uh, TB2 glue from Angel Wing Designs. Now it's got a lovely dispenser on the top, which you can clean with a pin. But just remember when you stop using it, Put the little plastic cover over and then when I'd got those all down in place I've got my blue tack and this weight just holding everything square and then I quickly tacked all the ribs here with a little bit of thin sino and then once I was happy with that I then went over it and it, obviously using these little very thin cannulas from Angel Wing Designs, these are brilliant because then I've got a controlled, I can control the amount of glue that's coming out. So I've done all the spar joints and I've also done the wing join the joints. What I will do is, um, because we're going to be sheeting underneath, um, that's difficult to say, we've had a couple of drinks, isn't it? Anyway, um, I will make sure that I'm just going to do the underneath as well. But for the time being, I'm now just going to let this all cure. And then the next thing we'll do is we're going to obviously feed in the interstitial ribs as well. And then go from there for the next bit. Change of plan. I have um, just added the leading edge. Now it's not glued at the moment. All I've done is I've blue tacked and shimmed with pins just to hold it all in place. What I intend to do is tack all of this in place now. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to, I found it's easier to actually drop these in here like so. And then I can then get them to fit like so. I think otherwise trying to get um, all the others to fit. Uh, you might end up finding some of these ribs are not accurate but the best way to get these to fit thinking about it is that the as these all in place and there's leading edges in place I can get these to fit if you fit all these in one place there's no way you're going to get um, 26 ribs 100% all the same but look they'll just drop in there nice so I've got that pinned quite happy with it I'm now going to tack this and I'm going to slowly add my interstitial ribs sorry for the confusion so leading edge and then dropping in the interstitial ribs has gone really well um i will i think once i've got it off the table we'll be adding a little bit more glue um into this sort of area but it's going to be better when it's off the bench right now the next thing is this is our second section of trailing edge and the idea is is that is going to drop into there like oh look at that wow really I've got what look at that wow I was just <laughs> I was just going to put that there just as a bit of a reference I thought well I'll have to do some fiddling well bugger me look at that right 
Okay, calm down Nick. So we've got that, and then the other thing we're going to need, bear with, bear with, is we want to cut one of these, we'll cut this in half, and then we're going to use one of those, it's going to butt up to there like so. It's all very exciting isn't it? Right, I have used TB2 along the whole of this and all I've done is I've got this ruler just spreading the way, I mean god it fitted down beautifully. And so I'm just literally, I'm going to leave this um, now. Um, I've got a granddaughter to pick up and also I think it would be a good idea just to let everything just sort of dry off now because uh, I've gone pretty hard at it. I'll tell you what, I reckon you could smash one of these out quite easily in a day. But uh, that's, this laser cutting is just, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal. So, um, I will get back to you shortly. Okay, so I just added the um, this rear spar at the back, uh, left it overnight, and then I've got to say, um, this tape that I was showing you, telling you about from Lidl, um, I, yeah, I mean, I had to go round the bottom of it with the blade, but um, it seems to have been very resistant to the, well, to the PVA and they'll have a little bit of a run out of sino along here but anyway right stop waffling so at the moment I am not going to add the top sheeting or the bottom sheeting um, I'm just going to clean this bit up here so these two bits here I'm just going to cut off um, at the right angle using a, a drill um, such as one of these now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do exactly the same wing um, and basically I'm going to lay this up against the other half of the wing just to make sure that I've got it jiggled up all um, correct. So um, I'll get back to you when I've got all my bits ready and then we'll talk through it. Right, okay, let me just describe what I've just done. I set up my ribs two, three, four, five, six all ready to go. Um, this is overextended here deliberately at the moment and I'll explain why in a moment. But that is the whole centre section um, obviously magnetically held together and all I'm going to do is the reason that this is hanging out of here at the moment purely because is these are not glued at the moment and what I didn't want to do is overdo the wiggle I know I've got enough so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with this and then when I'm happy with it, I'm just going to push this rod all the way back in. Now, for God's sake, don't get any glue um, along here, along here. So only tack where absolutely necessary. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that to dry. And then what I will do is I'll then going to remove this. But that's how I've done it. And uh, literally on magnetic power when it's um, dry. I'll pull it apart if I've got any issues then I haven't got the rest of the wing to, to ruin but that seems to fit in there look that slides in there quite nicely so I'm not really concerned about that so that's great so I'm now just going to stick these bad boys down and then uh, I'm happy crack on with the rest of the ribs I bet that was as clear as mud for you Right, so we've got both our halves done. I love that sound. Right, now, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to just sheet the top, sheet the bottom, and I'm just going to talk you through that. I mean, honestly, I reckon if you used um, Sino and Activator, I reckon you could smash one of these out in the morning. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sheet the top, sheet the bottom. I'm going to talk you through that because there's a little extra panel to go in for where the servos are going to go. Okay, so we are going to be sheeting this inner section here. Now, in the kit you will have these little bad boys. And you'll notice that the idea is they are going to fit on there like so. Now let me show you something. 
you'll notice that rib number four has got like this squiggle across the top. So the idea is that's actually supposed to be cut out. Now there are lots of options that you can do and I know I've spoken to Andy and I know he's done, he's going to do exactly that I've, what I've done is I've just marked that with a little bit of black uh, felt tip. So the idea is when I've done my top sheeting, so the idea is this goes on first because this is uh, as much as a servo support like so and then the one that is marked top <laughs> um, that's going to go on top. Now the thing to remember is is that once we've got that there we can then nibble that bit out so if you don't glue that bit out but what you're actually making is the best strength and I think the most accurate finish but honestly you could cut it out now and I'm sure it'd be absolutely fine so I'm gluing this in place and then I'm doing the top and then I'm going to roll over and do the underneath but before I do the underneath obviously what we need to do is just get my servo set and orientated and then we'll talk about how we're going to fix them in. Right, so I have glued in my uh, the servo area, the servo panel strengthener. Now, a little tip, if you've got those uh, little metal blocks like I've got, I mean, anything with a straight edge that's magnetic, but if I put that on there like that, that on there like that, it means I can now butt them up against there and I'll get a nice finish against the side of the rib. So that's going on there like so. This is then dropping in here like so. Now, um, also you'll note, I have just licked the inside edge of this, just a couple of licks, just so it drops down in there nicely. And what I might do is, is I might PVA most of this, and then um, I might just wick a little bit of, with my thumb over each bit, and just slowly go along outwards um, holding it in place but I'll I'll let you know how I get on with that but anyway this first and then we'll uh, so crack on with these oh one tip while you're faffing around with this because that's going to take a little bit of concentration and time get your get your winglets get your four winglets there's two aside glue them together with a PVA, don't use Sino because Sino is a nightmare to try and get a nice aerodynamic shape because you'll end up with half points. So I'm using TB2 and I'm just going to glue these together, leave them clamped. I'm going to put them to one side. So when I've done jiggling around with both of these, these will be ready to go. Right, top sheeting's done. Now the bottom sheeting is exactly the same. Um, I have elected not to uh, nip the servo bit away first. I'm gonna actually add uh, my two sheets because I think it just gives me extra strength around here and it means I only need to nibble exactly as much as I need. So I, that then goes on there like so. Good little tip, just make sure that you've not got any sino that when you've added these ribs to the carbon, it's actually stopping the sheet just going down fully and then that's gonna just drop on there like so. so. I'm just going to stick those on, roll those over like I did before. I'm going to do exactly the same to the other side. And then while these are all gluing, we're going to talk about um, sorting out the fin and attaching it to the, uh, what I would call the connector in the middle of the wing. So while we've got our um, sheeting going off, we can crack on with this. So we're going to need this bit these two bits and we're going to cut these out and then these are going to get joined together here to here which I will show you and then we're going to be then gluing it onto here so my suggestion is is we're going to glue these two together and I'm going to be using uh, wood glue and then I'm going to sand it to shape and then glue it on into place I just think it'll be easier to do that but uh, let me talk you through it Right, that's my fin glued using the TB2. Remembering to put the lid back on. Uh, I've, ma I've pushed it all together firmly and I've just used the clamps to keep it in place. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of weight just to keep everything happy. And then when that's done, then we're going to just sand it to shape. And then glue to here. 
Right, well, the sheeting on both wings gone gone very well. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to put the small bit of elevon, well, the, the false elevon, this bit here. That's going to go on there, like so. Now, you need to cut that yourself. So let me just show you. I've just sort of done some lead lines along, and I've just literally just held it over and then marked it and cut it to shape. Also remember, um, I don't know what you'll get in your kit, but obviously this is a pre-development kit and I've just got that bog standard um, triangular tapered shape and remember that the um, elevons actually taper to the tips. So I'm going to cut these to size and then I'll then glue that and the tip on. And then I just need to do a little bit of jiggery pokery with that to get it in. And then we're, uh, I'm going to do that both sides and re then really we're ready for a sanding. Um, one last thing we've got to do, obviously I've got my fin there glued ready to go. But what I am going to do is I'm going to wait until I've got all my structure done. I'm going to put it all together and make sure I get this square. Right, so I've put the tips on and I used medium cyano for that because that's what's recommended for the... Um, 3D printing but just make sure that you don't get any that switches out because that might be difficult to sand. It's not going to be a big brainer but anyway. So medium cyano here then I used uh, wood glue here on these two. Uh, remember, remember that Remember that obviously this is not being glued at the moment because that's portable and then um, so now the next thing is just got to have a mass sanding. I'm going to go off and have a mass sanding and then when I'm done I'll come back to you um, and when I'm happy with everything sanded then I'm just going to uh, stick the fin on. Now, fin. All I'm going to do, I'm going to round the edge and I'm going to taper it. Um, don't go mega thin on there. Just don't forget if the glider flips over you want some strength there but I will go down to about one or two mil um, but only taper it down from about here and that I am just going to sand from about here I shall round the edge off make it aerodynamic off to both sides and then I'm going to taper it to about one mil um, just on this last I'd say about that bit from about there I think now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it all sanded up when I'm absolutely happy with all the shape and then I'm going to get it on the bench and I shall drop that in place and make sure it's all nice and square and that will pop on there like so. But I'm not going to do that until I'm happy I've done all the sanding. Then I will come back to you and we will discuss covering and installation and to be frank we're nearly there. Ready? Steady? Oh! <laughs> Apparently, according to Andy Whitehead, I've gone old school. So let me show you what the next thing is. I've covered those. Um, only one little tip. Um, I've used an iron, but be very, very careful if you use a hot air gun because the uh, 3D printing doesn't like that. So, so all the mine is tacked down beautifully with just a normal covering iron. And I just wafted mine over afterwards with a um, little bit of a heat gun just to take a few creases out. But next thing is elevons. And I have remember that we uh, the chamfer is at the top because we are bottom hinging this. I've got my horn out. I've also cleared the hole and checked that it works with the fittings that come in the kit. And now all I've done is I've lined the, I've put it in place, I've lined the hole up and now I'm just going to use medium cyano to put these in place. And then when we've done that, we're going to be whacking the servos in. I'm not going to lie, I am pretty off at the moment. I ordered some servos for this on Saturday. three o'clock in the afternoon I had a confirmation email and then 
uh, the next email I got was to say it was being dispatched on the Tuesday and it's now Friday and I've still not received them so component shop I won't be using you anymore because this is the second time you shafted me on this don't get blaming anybody else as a post service or anybody else but yourselves because if you've got that order on Saturday you could have sent it on Monday end of right so um, I am just gonna stick I've got some uh, managed to find I've got some Emacs 905 ones um, I'm going to stick these in. Um, they they fit in. Uh, this is a tight fit. A lot of the servers are tight fit. Just little top tip. Just make sure that your top sheeting is not overhanging the rib, the uh, the rib, uh, just there, because that might just restrict your servo from fitting in. Just remember, you've got to feed your servo through. But I just uh, bent mine on uh, like so. I'm just push, pushed it through. So I'm going to just glue these in place. And then uh, we've just got to talk about the horns and we're done. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm just pretty annoyed at the moment. Anyway, happy days. I'll see you shortly. Right, I've calmed down now. I've got my servos in. Um, in your kit, you will get a lovely little blister pack just to go over the top of the servos. Uh, mine is just showing through, but that hadn't been produced when I got mine, so you're very lucky. Now, so all we're going to do, what you need to do is we're going to clamp, I will show you this, but I'm going to clamp my control surface um, like so, making sure that your servo arm, or your servo has been centered. So I'm going to clamp it like so. I just use a little bit of bolter top and bottom. I, I like to do one at the tip and one in the centre section if you can. Like so, do one at the tip as well. Now, in your kit you will have four of these which are 3D printed and you've got a little pack of screws here be very careful um, I'd either put them in a bowl or whack them on a magnet because these are going to go flying across your uh, bench if you're not careful and then obviously you've got your wire so my advice is I would just cut this wire in half and basically um, the pops in there like so and apparently Andy has used um, he said to me he just filled this and glued it with medium sino so the idea is that get glued into there and then the little screws you get screw across across there and then um, that's your servo arm sorted so I'm just going to crack on those I'll show you one of those when I finish with it but just remember make sure that your servo arms haven't moved and they are centered before you start doing the cutting and measuring of these Right, me thinking out loud. Tell you what I have done, just a little bit of added security. One end, I have put a very small right angle bend, and the idea is that will fit down on side there, but I've made sure that it's not standing proud. In fact, I will take that down a little bit. So basically what's happening is that is going on there, then this is gonna get medium sino in place. I am also, when I've got my basic adjustments ready and this one is glued in I'm going to put a tiny tiny little collar of heat shrink possibly red because it matches the wing just on the end there and then I can just nip it in a bit more uh, sino so that's just going to that's literally going to stop that end moving of course obviously can't do that the other end so uh, what I am going to do I suppose I could have done if I'd have thought about it but um because what I could do is actually bend both and then slide the other one up afterwards. Oh, I haven't done that. Uh, let me show you how I've jigged it up. So, I haven't used the screws. I've got just modelling pin to the hinge and the servo arm. And now all I'm doing is I'm just getting the measurement for the arm. So what I can do is when I've got the measurement for the arm, I can put the hook on, slide it on, then I can do the bend and then slide it back on, but actually make sure I've got two bits of heat shrink as well. If that sounds like complete a mishmash, stick with it, 
when I've finished it, I'll show it to you. Right, so, I did it just as I made it up talking to you. Um, the second, I slid the other connector on all the way after I've marked with the servo live. Um, I got exactly where the bend should be. So I put two bits of heat shrink on, slid them on first, slid this white bad boy on, uh, the actual uh, horn holder, slid that on, did my bend and then medium sino, slid it back, held it, and I have just put these two little bits of heat shrink here. I mean, I'll be honest with you, this isn't like Angel Wing Designs design or anything. This is just Nick thinking out loud that in some way, I mean, I'm sure Andy's right that the sino is gonna hold it if it was just a straight tube, but I've managed to do mine very successfully with a bend, which is gonna relocate it one way, and then I'm hoping with the heat shrink that you can actually then wick a little bit of sino in is that ain't moving. So I'm just gonna screw these in, crack on with the other one. And I think we're nearly finished. I hope you uh, figured out what I did there. Uh, <laughs> I literally did speaking to you. It said he went bing, popped up in my head. So uh, anyway, push red one done. I better mess the right second one right up. Right, there we go. <clears throat> 187 grams, ready to fly. Um, I haven't set the controls up yet. I'm just gonna check what Andy suggests, but I shall just uh, make sure that I go fairly gentle, but I've on my rate switch, I can have something so I can go absolutely mental. So there you go. Um, that is a pre-development build. Um, the only thing I would say, a couple of little tips is watch out for the bottom peg that you've got to fit. Um, be careful of using like a heat gun near the um, 3D printed bits. But uh, honestly, Andy has really nailed this. Uh, you can see when you build it, there's been a lot of thought into, uh, into how everything jigs together, how everything slots together. And quite frankly, if I'd have been faffing and talking on the uh, doing a video, I reckon I could have smashed this out in a day, day and a half quite easily. Anyway, fingers crossed for the weather. I'd like to thank everybody for their support. And hopefully you're going to see me on a hill very shortly. <sighs> One last thing before I run to the hills, I should mention... In your midsection, the, the, in this thin piece of the 3D printing, you'll see there's a notch. And that notch, just to give you some idea, is back at 155 millimeters. Now I understand that somebody has been doing a lot of experiments to it. Uh, and I'm just, ooh, I'm only just behind it. Should I try it? Oh, look at that, look, and it's balancing. Anyway, so you see a G, that's for expert settings. If you're fairly new to this type of flying wing, or this is your third or fourth wing, my advice is, I would go forward about five to 10 millimeters to start off with, and you get a bit more experience, you can smash it back. But anyway, the V, that's, um, you can see in the bottom of this fitting, that is the CG for experts. Right, I'm off to the hills.